You know what would have totally helped? Me actually remembering to get my tripod out of my bedroom before putting a cat in there that wants to get out. Whoops. So, today is Tuesday, that's April 4th. We're on the 4th? 5th? 5th. That's right, I went through this yesterday, dang it. And, well, it's election day here. Mm, gotta love that double chin. So, I wanted to talk about votification, or the act of voting. I've, I made a word. So, I live in the state of Wisconsin. In the state of Wisconsin, today is our election day. Technically, it's actually two election days in one, and I'll get to that in a moment. So, there's a couple of elections going on. The first is the local election. I'll put a sample ballot over here. This is actually what my ballot looks like for local elections. For those of you outside of the United States, our electoral process is a little on the weird side. Local elections are probably the more important one, but we as Americans tend to not actually focus on them very often. So, as you can see from the ballot over here, there's a whole bunch of different offices up for grabs right now, and this is not our standard election day. And many of you probably have noticed that today is not the quote-unquote American Election Day. Today is actually just the, the first Tuesday in April. Our local elections are not, in fact, the same day as our national elections, so things get a little weird, and that's something that seems to happen more often here. Uh, if I remember correctly, in Florida, the local elections were the same day as everything else, at least. They just weren't necessarily the same here. Anyway, that was a sidetrack. Back to those ball that ballot. So these are the local elections here, and if you can read the ballot, which I believe you can, depending on your screen resolution, uh, you'll notice something very strange about the ballot. All except for one of these elections are uncontested. What uncontested means in this case is that no one is running against the person that's running. You can technically write in anybody that you want, but in practice, unless if somebody is a real bad person, whoever's on the ballot's going to win. And the second thing is that all of these people are... there's no political party associated with them. In the United States, typically you have a political party associated with your everything. I'll get to that in a moment. The only actual election that is going on where there's a choice between two people is the... Um, Wisconsin Supreme Court election, which is between our former Supreme Court Chief Justice and a different Supreme Court Justice. There is a second election that's also going at the same time, what's called a primary. For those of you that either live outside of the United States or may be somewhat unsure as to what's going on, primary elections are how political parties decide what candidate to put forward in a later ballot. In this case, this is the presidential primary election, so we have those primary elections going on. You might recognize a couple of names off of there. So in the state of Wisconsin, we have what's called an open primary. What an open primary means is that you can vote in either the, in any single party's primary, just not all of them at once. It doesn't matter if you're a registered member of the party, all that matters is that you vote in one of them. Florida, on the other hand, where I grew up, has what's called a closed primary, which is that you need to be a registered member of the political party that you wish to vote in the primary for. I myself tend to not really lean so much as practically fall off the left side of the spectrum. As such, I, when I was in, living in Florida, I was a registered Democrat in order to be able to vote in the primary that the candidates are at least closer to my own personal perspective on politics. In Wisconsin, I'm registered as independent, because there's no reason to register in a political party. I don't gain a benefit from it, and I don't really like either of the major political parties in the United States. All of this, and the fun part that a lot of international folks don't quite realize, and it's really interesting to me that it's not widely known, political parties aren't in the Constitution of the United States. At all. This is an entirely arbitrary process done by the political parties in question. It is not really organized by the federal government. Uh, the main thing that it's organized for, if I remember correctly, the political parties themselves actually pay for the ballots. 
It's a very strange process, but what this ends up meaning is that each localized political party have their own rules and regulations as to how things work. In the state of Wisconsin, if I remember correctly, for the Republicans, the elections are or the primaries are actually based off of what district you're in. So, for instance, if I was in District 1 and the winner of District 1 was, say, Ted Cruz, that would mean that Ted Cruz would get the delegates from District 1. Even if, say, for instance, it was 51% Ted Cruz, 49% Donald Trump, Ted Cruz would get all of the delegates from District 1. Same with District 2, District 3, District 4. Finally, there's an at-large amount of primary votes, electoral votes, whatever you want to call them. Delegates, that's the correct term. Uh, there's an overall at-large number of delegates that's just based off of who won the lo uh, who won the overall election based off of population. The weird part is that thanks to effectively gerrymandering, you can get 51% of the state of Wisconsin's vote and only get the at-large and maybe one district's delegates and not even have the majority of delegates. Oddly enough, this also happens in the U.S. election, for just president in general. The Democratic one, on the other hand, if I remember correctly, let me double-check this really fast. I was absolutely right. So, in the Democratic primary, the way it works is from proportional vote. That is, I have 60% of the vote, thus I get 60% of the delegates. The exception is that if you get less than 15% of the vote, you immediately get zero delegates and are, for lack of a better way of phrasing it, dropped out of the race for the state of Wisconsin. So if, say for instance, O'Malley, who has already dropped out of the race, ends up with 2% of the vote, he will not in fact get 2% of the delegates from the state of Wisconsin, he will get zero, and then the other two will divide up equally based off of their percentage of the vote. Now, that's not all of the delegates from Wisconsin on either party's case. There's also, and uh, the Democratic Party calls them superdelegates. The Republican Party doesn't really label them so much as their special delegates, but these are delegates that are not awarded by vote at all. Superdelegates are basically high up members of the party who can vote however way they want. In this particular election cycle's case, almost all of the superdelegates have already pledged for Hillary Clinton because she was the presumptive nominee. She's probably still going to be the nominee for president, but it's not necessarily clear at the moment as to who the end nominee is going to be. In the Democratic's ca Democratic Party's case, usually the superdelegates end up just voting for whoever's winning the normal delegate race for each of the states, so it's more of a safeguard type of thing, and not exactly the most democratic thing out of the Democratic recall, eh, Democratic Party. The Republicans don't really have a superdelegate equivalent. They have something kind of akin to it by GOP member... Eh, head honchos of the GOP, or Grand National Party, it's the nickname for the Republicans. Head honchos of the GOP have the ability to vote themselves with an equal power of the delegates, and their rules inside of the party get really weird really fast, and that's way beyond the scope of this. So, what's this all mean? So, today I voted in, effectively, a local election and a primary election. In the local election, I voted for the judge that I happen to prefer. In the primary election, I chose the Democratic ballot myself because, well, that's closer to my own politics. And I voted for Bernie Sanders myself, because I like Bernie Sanders' policies. I'm not particularly going to be sad about Hillary Clinton, but Bernie's closer to my personal politics anyway. And then for all of the rest of the completely uncontested elections, I voted for lizard people. hope this was at least somewhat informative. Um, I'm. If you have any questions about this type of thing, feel free to ask. I know a fairly large amount, oddly enough, about the way elections work. Um, Primary-based politics, I also even know what caucusing is, although I've never lived in a state that does caucusing, so I've never been able to participate in a caucus. And it's also a fun word to say. Caucus, caucus, caucus. Um, that's really about it. That's really all I wanted to talk about. I mean, my day today was basically votification and catching up on YouTube videos. And yes, those are pictures of my cats on monitors behind me. 
Enjoy internet, and I will see you some other time. Bye. And that's because our local elections are not in fact... The heck are you doing, Kitty? Our local elections are not in fact the, um... Our local elections are not the same day at... Meow? Meow. Stop recording.